is there a way you can become a data engineer quickly? Now, I think the short answer is probably no. There is a ton of skills and concepts you need to understand in order to become a rock solid and rock star data engineer. Everything from SQL and programming to data warehousing and sometimes other skills like Cloud, Snowflake, which obviously isn't a separate skill, but there's just so many tools. Uh, you know, they've made this whole crazy data landscape that learning to become a data engineer quickly is hard. But what we can do is in 100 days, and that's what we're going to focus on here, is build up a baseline of skills that you can acquire that can get you further. So in this video, what we're going to do is cover 100 days and what you can learn in those 100 days in order to make sure you are on the right path to becoming a data engineer in 2024. Now, I wanted to switch up this video. You know, we, we always do the cliche uh, video of here's a data engineer roadmap for 2024. Or here are all the best courses you can take. Instead, let's just make it so there is an easy time constraint. So 100 days. So you can make sure you go through this checklist that we built and track your progress through it all. So for this video, the goal will be one, to explain how you should actually use this checklist most effectively, because just going through and watching the videos is not sufficient, right? That's the problem we all do. We just go through, we watch a bunch of videos and then never grow from that. As well as we'll go over the different sections and why they're there, different concepts, and hopefully you'll learn how you can go through this effectively and amplify your learning process. Now let's first talk about how you should go through this checklist. And, I, and this is definitely more of my method of how I learn. And you might have your own, but I think you need to have an actual conscious and like meaningful approach to learning new concepts, right? You can watch a bunch of videos on economics or learning a new language or how to play a guitar. But if you don't, one, try practicing a guitar every day. I have a guitar somewhere that I haven't practiced. Or at least do some level of reflection on what you've learned. You're not going to learn much. So here's what I'd recommend you doing. At the end of each day, after, you, after you've gone through whatever we've recommended you go through, those videos, that content, you take a moment to actually try to answer a few questions. Those questions can be, what have you learned? Actually write what you've learned. Like, don't just let it fly out of your head. Uh, what are two or three interesting points? What did you find that was actually interesting? Just write those out. What are two or three points you maybe don't fully understand? And then go and look up why you don't understand it. Uh, you know, write a little chart, write a little picture make it really interactive for you don't just again don't just passively consume content make sure there is this conscious choice to actually try to ingest it and then try figuring out how you could apply that skill right if you learn how to uh, make a class where does that class fit like where do you use that is there somewhere in your day-to-day -day job you could use it you know if you've learned to automate a script on a lambda how could you use that what's a way you could use that i think this is great because one of the things we're going to recommend you do is obviously projects and if you're not trying to think and be creative on what you can actually do with these skills, it's gonna be hard for you to come up with your own project ideas, which is what you should do. Finally, find a way to be kept accountable. Now we're gonna create uh, in our Discord channel, kind of your 100 days of data engineering, where you can kind of go through it, but there are tons of ways you can keep accountable. You don't just have to do it through this Discord channel. It's just one way. Um, there are tons of other groups uh, you can find or just post about it on LinkedIn and, and keep yourself accountable that way. You don't have to post every day, but, you know, maybe every other day, every four days, every five days, just post your update. Um, if you do it every five days, just be like, hey, here's what I learned on day one, two, three, and four, and five, and summarize all of it. I think it's a great way of just keeping yourself accountable and challenging yourself, doing a lot more than, again, just passively consuming content, which is what we all do on TikTok or Instagram way too much anyways. So let's, let's be a little more active. So now let's go through the 100 days. We've gone through how you should kind of approach this, and now let's actually go through what the plan is. So first 10 days, our plan for you for the first 10 days is just to review the basics. That means we're going to go over the basic SQL programming, uh, some data modeling and some concepts about data pipelines. That's really the focus here. We're going to just try to make sure you understand where you fit. You know, are you comfortable with SQL? Are you comfortable with programming? Do you know, you know, is this your first time into, into programming? Do you even know what a for loop is? And that's okay if you don't, it's just good to assess where you're at or what you've maybe forgotten because the last time you learned a programming language was five years ago in college and you haven't touched it since. That's the point here. Just to give you a quick refresher, it's like that first few days in a course when you go to college, it's all meant to be easy. Two plus two equals four. Yes, it feels like review, but it's a great way to set the tone and for you to start building this habit of going through the checklist. 
Because really that's going to be the key here is like the habit that you form now will get you going forward. And you don't need to speed through things. I think sometimes I've seen people go through courses or something and just feel like if I go through it, that's what teaches me the concepts. But going through and reading a book without mindfully reflecting or going through a course and not thinking about what you're learning isn't effective. And I'm going to keep yelling that because I do it all the time. We all we all watch a video and come away with, you know, what did we actually take away from that? So just make sure you, you actually think through it. Don't just watch an hour of content and then watch the next hour because you're trying to go through the checklist faster. Um, that's not going to help you learn. The, the goal is to actually have this stuff stay with you for a long period of time. Now, once we've gone through the basics, we've done the basic basics, we're going to dive deeper into these concepts, right? Now you understand the for loop, you know, if statements, you can write some basic uh, conditional statements and you can write some basic scripts. Great. Perfect. Let's take that to the next level. You know, on SQL, let's answer some difficult problems using SQL, right? We're going to have you look at some data sets. We're going to have questions. You're going to answer those questions. Yes, there isn't a perfect answer here. We'll have some answers, but not everything has an answer. But you're going to go through that data set and you're going to understand, you know, what is it? Write some queries. How do you write, uh, you know, a rank function? How do you write all of these different clauses? How do you use them? How do you actually apply this stuff? Same thing with Python, right? We're going to be going over some basics here with the instruction and algorithms. Yes, you might not always use it, but I really do believe there's value in understanding it, even if ChatGPT can write it out faster than most of us can even try. I don't think it's bad to understand some of these basics. Same thing with data modeling. I think everyone gives data modeling, like we went over the, the beginning part, um, the first 10 days, you know, we went over some things like dimension tables and all of the high level concepts here, normalization, etc. Now let's actually try applying that. And I think everyone maybe gets upset when I recommend Kimball because every time I recommend it, people want more examples. But if you go through Kimball's book, he has a lot of examples uh, on how you can actually build your data model. So I, I, I would definitely check that out. Uh, we'll go through it as part of this and you'll build your own data models as we're going through it. Because again, this is really focused on making sure you really build that next layer. We're kind of building this pyramid. Baseline, now the next level of skills, which is going deeper. And that'll be your next 30 days. I also forgot to mention, you're going to be going through the cloud as well now. We didn't cover the cloud as much in last time. We're going to go through it here as well. You're going to be essentially going through IAM, understanding what it is, um, how it maybe works on AWS. AWS is just an easy one to work with. Uh, spinning up an S3 bucket, spinning up RDS, interacting with them in code, ingesting data so you can analyze it from a Postgres instance, doing things that aren't maybe that difficult, but get you familiar with going through those motions. Okay, now that you've done all that, you've got all this data and code and, and you, you, you've gotten comfortable, it's time to build a mini project. It's time to show off what you're learning. And it's great to kind of do this like every 30, 50 days or so to actually like make sure you're solidifying whatever you're learning into projects that are easy to understand. And now for this first project, I'll kind of give you a bunch of data sources that you can go to and maybe a few questions to answer with that data source and some ideas of what you can do with it, right? You can take that data, you can scrape it from sites or an API, you can ingest it into S3 or into a Postgres, something like that, um, automatically through, you know, using something like a Lambda set up on an event bridge. And then from there, you know, write some SQL queries, build a Tableau dashboard, build something on top of it. And so that that really just is something that you are going to do. You're going to ask some questions of that data and then build a basic probably dashboard because that's probably the easiest thing in 10 days that you can go through and really solidify your understanding here. Now, once we've done that, the next uh, days, 51 through 70, the focus will be kind of a survey of tools and concepts. There are so many tools and concepts in the data world, right? Like there's Spark, You've got Snowflake, you've got Databricks, which is obviously somewhat connected to Spark. You've got uh, various uh, open table formats. You've got data lineage, data catalogs. You've got things like Docker and all of these other different solutions. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna make sure you have a good understanding of a few of them. Again, we don't want to overwhelm you. You really, at the end of this 100 days, the goal isn't to be an expert data engineer that has 10 years of experience because you have 100 days of not work experience, but learning experience and that's okay, but it is good for you to at least be dangerous with these tools, to at least understand what they are, to at least be able to run uh, some Docker commands, to be able to go into, uh, you know, how to use things like Databricks and how to set up your own instances of various solutions and answer questions like, what is data governance? Again, this is just to make sure that when you start getting asked about this in your job, in your day-to-day -day workflows, you're ready 
you don't have to go look up everything. You have a good, quick answer um, and good understanding in terms of baseline of what something does. It's always good to just be ready. I've had plenty of times where I didn't understand a baseline concept and it looks a little bit silly, uh, especially early on in your career if you can't talk through even some of these basic concepts. So that's what we'll do here is we'll cover that. Now, finally, again, throughout this all, you'll still be doing a little bit of Python, some SQL, some cloud, messing around with different solutions. Great. Finally, for the next 30 days, the goal is to deliver a project, right? And here's the thing. I want you to deliver the project. I want you to actually think about what that project should be. Yes, we could go through and uh, build a project from start to finish. Uh, I have a bad habit of not actually going through all of my part ones uh, that we can maybe flash ups here. Um, but the point is, you need to come up with a project idea. And it's not as hard as you think. I think a lot of people sit there and fear that they're not going to come up with a good idea or they're just not sure how to start. And so here's what I'd recommend you do. We're going to kind of put some bullet points up here. First, pick some data sets, which again, I will list some data sets for you. Pick one of them that you'd like to work on. You know, it's interesting to you. The topic's interesting. Great. Then you can start trying to figure out some questions, some problems that you'd like to solve here. Now, the thing is, it doesn't have to be a dashboard at the end. And then part of this is like, how would you actually show this data? What you build doesn't have to be a dashboard. You can build a dashboard. You could build some sort of, you know, output that maybe is based on AI or ML, right? Or maybe you scrape all this data from some site and, and, and ingest it and summarize it and put it into, uh, you know, your own site. I saw someone once do that where they basically took a bunch of YouTube um, and podcasts and they took a bunch of YouTube transcripts and podcasts and summarized them using uh, ChatGPT and posted them somewhere else and then charged like $1.99 for people to have access to it. I think they're making like 10 grand off that a month. So there's really simple things you can do that I consider somewhat data engineering that aren't dashboards and you can totally build those. And I think that's that's what's fun here. Um, this is kind of like an example I've once heard, which is like, this is kind of somewhat similar or this exercise we're gonna do is somewhat similar to the one you might've heard before, which is think of like a hundred uses or think of as many uses as you can in a minute for a certain thing. Like let's say a brick is usually the example. It's the same thing here. You need to sit there and be creative and be like, hey, what could I do with this data? It doesn't have to be a dashboard. And I'm kind of stuck sticking on this point because I really want you to think, what can you do with this data? It doesn't have to be told to you. You, I believe you can figure out your own ideas of like what you could do with data. Next, pick some sort of tool or framework, um, whether that's Airflow, whether that's Lambda. Obviously, uh, I'll give a shout out to Mage here, which again, I am partnered with. So obviously I have some benefits to say that, but there are plenty of solutions you can pick. I'll put a few more other up here. There are so many, um, but just pick a few. Make sure you're picking something that you see, I think in job descriptions, like you see Airflow a lot, if you see SSAS, if you see Azure Data Factory um, in the jobs that you're interested in, yeah, probably pick that solution and let's go with that. Next, pick a data solution that you'd like to work with. Snowflake, Postgres, S3, Databricks. There are so many. Um, again, as long as it's being used at a company, I think it's a good choice. And then from there, you can kind of do your ingestion, store that data. Again, you should have some sort of end goal in mind, whatever it is, your visualization, your app, whatever you're building, do the transforms required, and then finish. And if you really want to take it to that next level, write an article, post about it, share about it. It's really great to just hear other people's opinions about what you're working on, whether it could be better, whether it could be you know, changed, what other things you could add to it, because really just getting that initial MVP out there, one, it's exciting, so it'll hopefully get you doing this more and more often, but two, it's a great way to have other people give their perspective. So once you're doing this, and as you're doing each of the steps through these various kind of sections and days, don't feel like you have to hold it to yourself. Share that information with other people. Again, share those those things that you're learning. Remember how we said, like, write up some things about what you're learning every day? Share about that. That's a great way for both you to learn more because you're writing about it, you're making it stick into your brain in different ways. And then also, you're helping other people learn, which is a great way, I think, for the whole community to grow. So it's not just about you. You're helping other people grow. You're helping keep yourself accountable. You're solving a lot of different problems besides just learning. The learning is hard to do because most of us generally again passively consume content and feel like we're doing something but the goal here for this checklist is to really get you ingrained into it and keep you going right it's 100 days from 2024 and by the end hopefully you've got a good baseline and then you can plan out your next 100 days on what you're gonna do are you gonna keep on data engineering or learning about data engineering 
or are you going to learn a new topic because you're like, I don't maybe like data engineering, or maybe I need to specifically focus on SQL because I was weak there, or maybe I can start applying for jobs. That's another thing, which I hope you can do at the end of this 100 days. There's so many things that you can plan out as you're going forward. With that, guys, again, I really didn't want to build just a basic roadmap or best of 2024 courses. Again, this is meant for you to go through. Um, a lot of this stuff should mostly be free in terms of the uh, content that you can go through and make sure your skill set by the end of the next 100 days is at that next level as data engineer. And hopefully you continue uh, through this rest of 2024 learning more about data engineering. With that, guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.